Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's Explorer Classroom Hangout. My name is Joe Grabowski from National Geographic, and I will be your host for today. If you've been following along this month, uh, you know that we have been looking at a theme of uh, endangered species and protecting uh, endangered places. So we've been connecting with scientists and explorers uh, from all over the world and learning about the amazing work they're doing in the field to help better understand and conserve uh, our last wild places. Uh, on the planet. So in a minute, we're gonna meet Sarah and her team joining us live in Antarctica. But before we do that, I'm gonna share National Geographic's Mapmaker Interactive and get everybody a feel for where our, our groups are joining us today. So you should see my screen now, and we've got a map popping up here. So we are hanging out. This is me, the Red X in Canada, here in Alora, Ontario. And if you start to back up, uh, we can see we have a very coast to coast kind of spread of classrooms today. We've got classrooms joining us in New Jersey, in Connecticut. We've got a couple of classrooms hanging out with us in Illinois. If I back out one more, you can see we've got classrooms in Washington, in Wyoming, a couple of classrooms hanging out with us here uh, in California. And then we're gonna have to back out one more. We're gonna have to head south over uh, South America, down here to the Antarctic Peninsula and out to Livingston Island. That's where Sarah and her team are joining us from today. So I'll just zoom in uh, a little bit more there. All right, as I come back from the screen share, I wanna give a quick shout out to all the groups who I know are joining us live uh, via YouTube today. Don't forget, you can still get in on the action. Use the chat sidebar on the right. Let us know where you're watching from, your grade level, send us in some questions. We'll be sure to work those in. And any classrooms, whether you're watching uh, live on YouTube, whether you're on camera, take some pictures, post them to Twitter, hashtag explore classroom, tag at Nat Geo Education, because we love to see classrooms in action. All right, back to the main event. Sarah Keenly right now is in Antarctica on Livingston Island. She has one of our textbook size satellite BGAN units, which is allowing us to broadcast from one of the most remote places on the planet with no internet connection, no cell phone connection. So Sarah is a marine uh, mammal biologist at the University of California, Santa Cruz. She's fascinated by the variety of ways that animals have adapted to life underwater. Her work has taken her to remote islands, to zoos, to aquariums all over North America, and of course to her most recent location in Antarctica, where she's studying leopard seals, which are the top predator, one of the top predators in the Southern Ocean. They play an important role in the ecosystem, but we don't know a lot about their biology, about their day-to-day -day life. So she's got a team down there with her. They're studying their ecology, studying their physiology, and learning about how these animals are adapting to a rapidly warming uh, Antarctica. So Sarah, it is so amazing to have you joining us from uh, way down in the Southern Hemisphere. Looks like a beautiful day by Antarctic standards. We're so excited to be connecting today. Hi, welcome from Antarctica. We are standing by a group of elephant seals, southern elephant seals that are in the background right here, and there's some playing in the water. So if you see some splashing, that's what's going on there. My name is Sarah, and I'm with a team of researchers, and we're all here studying leopard seals. Um, I, like um, Joe said, I'm from the University of California, Santa Cruz. I'm originally from Austin, Texas, and I'm going to pass the camera around so each of, my, uh, each of our team can introduce themselves. Hey, I'm Renato Graf from Chile. I'm a marine biologist from the Chilean Antarctic Institute. Hi, I'm Mike Goble. I'm with the U.S. Antarctic Marine Living Resources Program, uh, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration in San Diego, California. Shane Canales from Colorado State University and one of the PIs on the NSF funded project down here. Steve Crumble, Baylor University, Waco, Texas, one of the PIs, NSF. And we are down here. We've, we're just about done with our third week um, here at Cape Sharef, which is on an island called Livingston Island in, um, uh, in the South Shetland Islands, which is off the Antarctic Peninsula. And most of the island that we're on is actually covered in glacier, which you hope you can maybe see in the background over there. Um, it kind of looks like a dome shape. So that's the glacier that covers most of the island. And where we are is called Cape Sharef. And it's actually a little peninsula that's got land that we can walk on quite a bit. I'm going to interrupt real quick because we have some penguins. Um, there's two little Gen 2 penguins coming up. Um, these guys are covering the island. And they actually go on these really long treks every day to be avoided, um, to avoid being eaten by the species we're here to study, leopard seals. 
So our team is working on studying the biology, especially the feeding ecology and physiology of leopard seals. So how they move, how they work, where they go, what they eat. And this is a top predator. So if you think of top predators like killer whales, lions, tigers, bears, leopard seals are the same. They're at the top of the food chain and they eat lots of really big things like penguins and sea lions and seals. But they also can eat really small things like krill and fish. And so we're spending a lot of time um, working on with these animals to understand as much as we can about their biology and how they're responding to a rapidly changing environment. So where I'm standing right now, we're actually looking at some southern elephant seals, which is another species of seal and sea lion that we have here on the island. And I'm going to rotate the camera a little bit, and it's going to be really hard to see. But off in the background, right over there, Yesterday, we saw what we think might be one of the first sightings of an emperor penguin. It's a juvenile emperor penguin here on the island, and it's a tiny little white dot off in the distance, so it may be hard to see, but every day is different, and we're so excited to see all of the different species that come through here and that live here and call this amazing and cold place home. All right. Very cool. Well, Sarah, can you dive a little bit into just what is a leopard seal? What do they look like? What do they feed on? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So leopard seals are one of the, so there's seals and sea lions. And so there's a group called Phocid seals. And leopard seals are a type of seal that has adapted to life in the Antarctic. And they are huge animals. The largest one that we've weighed is upwards of 1,200 pounds and weigh and measures more than 13 feet in length. So that is a huge animal. I'm about five feet, five inches tall. So that's more than double me um, of how long the animals are. So they're huge animals. And this is an interesting species because females are actually larger than the males are. So males are much smaller um, and they're, can be up to about half as um, half the weight um, of the adult females. And these guys are feeding on penguins, like the species that I just showed you in the background, gentoo penguins, chinstrap penguins. They're also eating fur seals and other seals. Um, actually, the other day we saw a seal that had been attacked by a leopard seal, which you could see these scars on the belly. And I'm going to actually show you a picture. So this is a picture of one of our leopard seals. Her name is Violet. And she is a huge female. She weighed about 515 kilograms, which is upwards of 1,200 pounds. So that's a picture of Violet, or a, actually that's a different leopard seal, that has its mouth open. And so one of the things that allows them to eat all of these big prey items are those huge teeth. They have huge canine teeth. They have really pointy post-canine teeth. And all of this allows them to bite onto prey, shake it from side to side, and tear off pieces of meat and so now we're going to scroll a couple pictures to show you some of the prey so this is a fur seal pup uh, this is one of the favorite prey items of leopard seals and they're actually causing um, the fur seal population here at Cape Giraffe to go down because they're eating so many pups and then here's going to be another picture of some gentoo penguins and this is another favorite prey item of the leopard seals here so they're really incredible animals and they're eating a lot of prey all right. Awesome. Well, Sarah, uh, on an, any given day, you're walking down the beach. You see a leopard seal uh, on the beach. What do you and your team do? So if we are lucky enough to see a leopard seal on the beach, then we um, have a whole set of procedures that we do to work with this animal safely, both for the animal being safe and for us being safe. And all of this work is done with a bunch of different permits that allow us to do the work. And we're all highly trained with years of experience. And especially the PIs on this project have been working in the Antarctic for years and years and years and have just worked with a variety of species. So the first thing that we do is we get an estimate of the animal's mass and then we give them essentially medicine that makes them sleepy. And um, actually they snore a lot of times on these drugs and, and it puts them to sleep. And then we're able to, able to safely work with them. We attach an instrument that records where these animals go when they're at sea and what they're doing. And also it gives us a lot of information about their dive behavior. So how deep they're 
they're diving and where they're going to do that. And that also gives us information about the types of prey that these animals are targeting. And then we also take, oh, that actually, Renato um, grabbed one of the tags that we put on. So this is one of the tags that we put on. And it's a satellite tag. So that little antenna right here, that transmits through the satellite. And it also has GPS very much like your phone. And it gives us locations for every 30 minutes for the entire time these tags last, which the longest tag lasted about eight months last year. This is our second field season. And then it also, in this instrument, it also tells us how deep the animals are going and for how long. We also take a huge number of samples, hair, whiskers, um, blood, and all of this, all of these samples give us information about what the animal is eating, how well they're doing, their contaminant load. Um, and then we also take samples that give us information about their muscle physiology and their, exer the, their exercise capabilities. And so we're getting this huge profile of data, or huge baseline information data for these species, or for the species, um, that's giving us incredibly new insights in the species, and it's all really exciting. All right, amazing. So last time we talked, uh, last week, in fact, uh, you had managed to work with five leopard seals and uh, I know the goal, I think, this time around is to work with 10. Are we getting any closer? We are closer, yes. We have worked with six animals now. Um, we had added another animal, um, who's an adult female, whose name is Lone Star, to our, uh, of the animals that we have worked with. And we have seen several more animals but the weather has or weather and then the decreasing daylight we're losing about 10 minutes of daylight a day um, all of that is making it where we haven't been able to capture some of the other animals we've seen but today actually we we're looking out the window while eating lunch and we saw a leopard seal jump out of the water so we know that they're around but they're pretty picky about when they haul out they don't like when it's really windy they don't like when it's raining they don't like a variety of things it seems like and we haven't had a lot of really beautiful calm days so we're hoping tomorrow actually i think is supposed to be pretty nice so we are all keeping our fingers crossed that we have several animals um come back all right come back out of the water yeah well if field work if field work was easy it wouldn't be any fun so you got to have some challenges exactly. i know they make us really yeah, it makes us really excited every time we work with any animals because this season is just very different than what it looked like for us last year all right. Well, Sarah, and maybe some of your team can jump on in this, uh, this as well. I'm sure many classrooms are aware that our polar regions are warming twice as fast as the rest of the planet. What are some changes uh, that you yourself or maybe members of your team have observed uh, in their time working in the polar regions? Yeah, absolutely. I am going to direct that question to the expert here. This is uh, Mike who introduced, himself, who introduced himself earlier. He's been working here at Cape Sharef for over 20 years, and he is an amazing wealth of information about that very topic. Yeah, some of the biggest changes we've seen have been in the glacier and in the ice environment. We have a lot less icebergs than we used to, and, uh, and it is has been warmer, and that's affecting all species uh, that live in Cape Chirac. All right, very cool. Well, Sarah, we're gonna move to questions soon, but I was wondering if we can get maybe okay. uh, a look at the, lep at the elephant seals again, and maybe you can tell us a little bit about the elephant seals while we're checking them out. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm gonna try and step out of frame so it'll focus on the elephant seals. So I think that that's hopefully good. Okay, so we have some elephant seals that are playing in the water. There are some that are just piled up right here asleep. They kind of probably look silvery and brownish. I'm gonna rotate a little bit more. Um, and there's more playing in the water. There's some more sleeping on the beach. Um, and then there's actually some up by the pond with the penguins. So Southern elephant seals are the largest species of seal on the planet. They are, the adult males are huge, thousands of pounds, and they can, they can measure up to probably 15 feet in length. They're just or over, they're huge animals. Adult females are not small either. They also can weigh thousands of pounds, but are smaller than the males. And right now we have animals on land that are molting and they actually go through what's called a catastrophic molt. And what that means is that they're losing all of their hair and skin and regrowing it. And that's a really 
demanding process on their body. So they actually haul out and avoid swimming a lot during that time so they can regrow their fur and then they go back to sea to feed. Um, and then we also have some juveniles that kind of just do their own thing and are also hauled out here. And pretty much this is a reliable spot to see the Southern elephant seal. So every day, if we walk this beach, there's always a group of them um, lounging here. And it's really fun to see how they like to just kind of haul out in piles. And then you have the little ones in the water that are, those are small animals, but still larger than any of us. Um, and they're practicing fighting right now. So you can see that they're mouthing at each other. Occasionally they'll make little growling noises. Um, but these guys are small and aren't adult animals yet. So they're still figuring out how to be a Southern elephant seal. And actually we have the sister species to Southern elephant seals in North America from Mexico all the way up um, to California. And then they um, travel throughout the open ocean in the Pacific ocean called the Northern elephant seal. So they're sister species. All right. Well, Sarah, what do you say? Let's meet some classrooms. That sounds perfect. We're really excited. Okay. So I want to give a shout out. We have lots of uh, classes tuning in via YouTube today. I want to give a shout out to, um, let's see, second graders in Redmond, uh, Washington. A shout out to Seattle, uh, Sparhawk School in Amsbury, Massachusetts. Looks like some eighth graders hanging out with us. Um, let's see, Waterloo, some fourth graders hanging out in Waterloo. And I'm going to steal one of the questions right now. Um, from the fourth graders in Waterloo, what is the temperature there today? Ooh, so it's not gonna sound as cold as it actually is, but it's right above freezing today. So it's probably about 33 degrees Fahrenheit, about one degree C. Um, but the wind is a wind and the moisture in the air is what makes it feel really cold. Um, and so the wind is actually about, oh, we have some penguins coming out of the water. So I'm trying to get the camera. I, hopefully you can see over there a little black and white are gentoo pamming out. Um, so, but with the wind, it's 15 to 20 miles an hour today. That makes it feel so much colder. And yesterday we were having gusts of up to 47 miles an hour, which makes it hard to walk. So you actually have to kind of time your steps up the hills when the wind is blowing that hard. And it was just rattling all of the buildings when we were sleeping too. It's pretty crazy. All right, let's meet one of our live classrooms. We're going to go to Mrs. Cook's room first. Mrs. Cook has some first and second graders who are hanging out in Shoreline, Washington. Let's get that microphone turned on. How are we doing, first and second graders? Good. All right, who's up with a question? Why did you want to become a shining priest? Why did you want to become a shining priest? Oh my goodness, that's such a question. Why did we want to be a scientist? Oh, we love this question. That's such a great one. So I wanted to be a scientist because I love getting to ask questions that I don't know the answer to and figuring out the answers. And doing so has allowed me to travel to really incredible places like here, like Antarctica. It's a dream come true. But I'm going to let everybody answer that one because everybody's answer is so different and we all really enjoy what we do. All right, Mike. I love being an ecologist and we are down here studying the ecology of uh, leopard seals as well as many other species. Renato? Yeah, I also love answering questions about nature. So that is uh, being fulfilled my life for all this time. I wanted to be a scientist since I was in fourth grade, so that's pretty much all I ever wanted to do. Why did you want to be a scientist? Because I was in fourth grade. <laughs> I love it. Same. Just like everybody else, I love answering questions and trying to figure out all the things that we don't know about the world. That's such a good question. Thank you. All right. Great question to get us started. Let's jump to another one of our live classrooms. Let's go to Benicia, California this time. Second graders hanging out with uh, Mrs. Gross Hagerty. Let's get their microphone cranked on. How are we doing, boys and girls? Oh, oh, oh. All right, ask your question. What would happen if a penguin's wing was hurt? Yeah, that's right. Oh, what would happen if a penguin's wing was hurt? You know what? I'm going to let Mike answer that question because he's seen that several times. Uh, yes. Uh, sometimes they get attacked by leopard seals, and so they'll have a, an injured wing. Sometimes they survive, and sometimes they don't.
out here are really amazing at healing, um, and they can withstand some pretty awful looking wounds. Um, and so sometimes they can actually, if they have an injured wing, they can, um, it will heal itself over time. So they'll um, take a break and maybe not swim quite as much right then and then can heal. But other times they don't make it and they end up being food for leopard seals. Good question. Thank you. All right. Let's take another trip to a classroom. Let's go to uh mrs pospichel hanging out in roscoe illinois looks like she has some grade fours with her let's get that microphone turned on how are we doing grade fours hi, hi. hi. hello <laughs> okay. has there ever been any attacks by any animals to who the humans Say, have they ever attacked the humans? Have any animals ever attacked? I think that it might have cut out. I heard. Oh, it's cutting out a little bit. I'm going to move a little closer to the unit. I heard, have there been any attacks on, and then I didn't hear what it was that you were asking. So they're wondering, uh, for you guys, has there ever been any uh, any close calls? Or are the animals dangerous at all? Oh, that's a really good question. So they, I mean, they're wild animals. And I would say that almost every wild animal um, can be dangerous if you're not treating them respectfully or you're uh, getting too close to them. Um, but we work very carefully around the animals. We move around the animals really carefully so that they're safe and we're safe. Um, when we're really close to the animals, when we're doing um, the work I was talking about earlier, the procedures on the animals, um, we've given the animals medicine so that there is sleep. Um, because if we were trying to do that work and they were awake, then they would be scared. They would be trying to hurt, potentially bite, and then we wouldn't be safe and they wouldn't be safe. So um, they can be dangerous, but we're really safe in what we do. We take radios every time we're leaving um, the hut to go scout for animals. We give the animals really wide berths when we don't need to look at them. We use binoculars, um, and we just try and make sure that the animals are safe and that we're safe when it, in everything that we do. Do you guys have anything you want to add to that? Okay. No, that yeah, that's a really great question. Thank you. All right. So just while you're talking about that, Sarah, I'm going to share my screen really quickly because I have a really cool picture uh, of the team uh, weighing uh, a leopard seal. So I think it'll be cool to share with the students so they can see, well, A, how you weigh it and B, how big it is compared to, to you guys. So I'm going to share my yep. screen really quickly. So you should see my screen now, boys and girls. Yeah, that sounds great. And then here's the picture. You can see they've got the leopard seal uh almost looks like kind of like a blue kind of tarp or stretcher and so they're weighing it there and you can see just how big it is the head sticking out the end uh that is a big big animal all right so i'm going to come back from that screen share we're going to go to our next classroom there we go it should be back now let's go to mrs ed rosny's group they are hanging out with us in bristol connecticut looks like a selection of third fourth and fifth graders let's get that microphone turned on uh there it is how are we doing connecticut all right whoa big group in connecticut awesome how many year, how long do you have to stay there when you study the animals? Oh, oh, that's a good question. So for the project that the five of us are, five of us are working on right now, um, this project, we're here for five weeks. So we've been here for almost three weeks. So we have a couple more weeks to go. Um, but that's for a very specific project. That's the one working on the leopard seals. Uh, Mike also has spent about half of his adult life um, living down here. <laughs> well, not quite half, but yeah, I was here from January to March and went back home to California and then came back down with this wonderful crew. Yeah, and why do you spend so much time here? Uh, well, we have a series of protocols that uh, uh, sample uh, looked at multiple species and how they're changing with the changing environment. Yeah, yeah. so Mike has spent a lot of time here, but this project five weeks, great question. All right, we're going to jump to our online community. I'm going to steal a question from there, but I want to give a shout out to a few more groups. Uh, Mrs. Doyle's group is hanging out with us, third graders in New Jersey. Looks like we have another group uh, from Highland Ranch, San Diego, hanging out with us. And then looks like um, 
A shout out to Renato from Amelia. Amelia says, hello, Renato. Uh, so a shout out to you, Renato. Oh, that's Renato. All right. Very cool. Um, let's see. So we have, oh, this is a good question. Are there any animals that prey on leopard seals? That's a really good question. So there are no sharks here. So a lot of times seals and sea lions, one of their big predators is sharks, it, but there, there are no sharks here. So the only predator that really could take down a leopard seal here are killer whales. Um, and killer whales are known around, they're, they're bigger than leopard seals are, but we have no idea how often killer whales are eating leopard seals or if they are at all. If I were a killer whale, I wouldn't want to eat a leopard seal because they have some pretty darn big teeth, um, but we don't actually know. That's such a good question. All right, perfect. Uh, let's see, where do we need to go now? Let's go to Illinois again. Let's go to some third graders. Uh, hanging out with Mrs. Buring. If you don't mind turning your microphone on for me, then give us a big shout out, and then we'd love to steal your question. There we go. How are we doing, Illinois? Good. I heard killer whales are the top predator here. Killer whales are the top predator. So if they're both, which one? <laughs> okay, I didn't hear the very first part of that question, but I, I'm guessing you said you learned that killer whales are top predators and, and leopard seals are top predators. Is that correct? And you That's it. Yeah, she's know, wondering you know what, how they can both be that. Exactly. How can they both be the top predator? And is there one that comes okay, out on top? That's a good question. You're really Yeah, that's great. So you can actually have multiple top predators. And if we were actually going to draw a line, like I just, like we just said, killer whales could eat leopard seals. And so you could potentially say that killer whales are the top, top predator and leopard seals are also a top predator, but they, they may not be eating them that much because there's a lot of other prey for killer whales here. So you can actually have them in separate um, kind of food webs and interacting. And so leopard seals are top predators because they're eating other really big things like seals and sea lions. They're eating seabirds. And so you actually have them eating a lot of species that eat smaller things. Um, so you can have both in the same ecosystem. Does anybody else want to add to that? Uh, well, a lot of killer whales actually move north uh, uh, after the summer. And they're foraging in different places at different times and the leopard seals here during the summer are are primarily very coastal because that's where the penguins and the fur seals are that they primarily feed on after uh after this time of year and during the winter they're going to different places probably along the ice edge but that's one of the things that we're studying here yeah, yeah great question thank you all right, very cool. Let's take a trip now. Let's go to Flemington, New Jersey. Some grade fives hanging out with Mrs. Dottie. Let's get the microphone turned on. How are we doing, New Jersey? Yeah. 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 Hi. How do you get food to Antarctica? Hi. Oh, that's such a good question. Um, I'm going, who wants to answer that one? All right, I'm answering that one. So we actually have to bring all of our food down with us. And you should have seen how many boxes of food we had to carry onto the ship in Chile, which is where we got on board a ship. The ship brought us down to the Cape. And then we actually had to get into a smaller boat um, called the Zodiac that let, drove us onto land. And then we had to get the boxes off land. So we had put together an order from last year of all the food that we might need. And that includes what we call freshies. So that's all of the fresh lettuce and fruits and vegetables and fresh meat. Like that. And then we also have frozen food. We actually have a freezer, which is pretty funny if you think about it. We're in Antarctica, but we have to have a freezer. Um, but because it gets above um, freezing here occasionally, we want to keep the food really cold and safe. So we also have a bunch of frozen food, and then we also have dried foods like pasta and 
peanuts and peanut butter and honey and hot chocolate and things like that. And all of that gets loaded into tubs and boxes. We had tons of help loading all of the food onto the boat. And then there was a big crane that took all of those boxes of food and put them into the small boat. And then we had to carry all of that food about a quarter of a mile over multiple trips to get it to our hut where we then put it into our little um, fridge room, freezer, and then where we have our dried goods and tubs outside in plastic bags. Yeah, it's a lot of work, but we have to bring everything with us because there's nothing there's nothing here. Um, and so we're, we're, but we have tons of food. We're starting to run out of our fresh tea. We have maybe four avocados left. Uh, but we have lots of hot chocolate, so Steve's happy. Um, and we have lots of ramen. Uh, we're not going to starve. We have a lot of food. And Mike makes bread every other day. Amazing sourdough bread. And we eat it with butter and honey. We eat very well down here, even though we're so far away from the mainland. Great question. All right. Very cool. So dipping back into the YouTube community. Uh, first of all, Sarah, looks like there's someone tuning in named Sean Keenly. So I'm assuming that you probably know Sean. Um, and then I want to give a shout out to a few more groups. I think I'm a person. Yeah. Sorry, Sarah. Can you still hear me? Okay, perfect. So I was just saying we have uh, Sean Keenly tuning in and he's got a question for us. I'm going to put that out there in a second, but I want to give a shout out to Mrs. Brunette's group. Grade five, six is hanging out with us in Smith Falls, Ontario. So another cool classroom hanging out with us today. And I'm going to throw a two-parter at you. The first one, this is from Sean Keenly. He's wondering what other species of seal have you seen on the trip? And then the second question from another classroom, they're wondering how leopard seals hunt. Okay, both really great questions. So one of the really incredible things about being here at Cape Sharef is that we see so many different species. It's incredible. It's like a nature tour. So in terms of seals and sea lions, which are that whole group is called pinnipeds, we've seen Antarctic fur seals, which is one of the things leopard seals like to eat. We have seen Weddell seals, Weddell seals. Waddell seals. Um, <laughs> Steve's daughter made fun of how I said it. Um, Molly. Um, and then we also see elephant seal, like these guys sleeping and slumbering right behind me. So those, and leopard seals. So, right. So those are the four animals. But this trip, we also have seen two crab eater seals, which for me is a first. And that knocks out almost every single Antarctic pinniped that we could get. We're missing the raw seal, but they're really elusive and almost never nobody's worked with them, except Steve here, who's worked with a bunch of them. Um, so we're getting this huge sample of seals. It's just such an incredible place. Oh, second question. We had a second question. Thank you. I forgot. The question is hunt. And I'm going to direct that to Shane, and then I'm also going to direct it to Renato, who's seen some of that in action. So, so far, we know that they hunt penguins and sea lion pups. So they're really, really fast and attack hunters when they're in the shallow water. We don't know how they hunt in deep water, so that's part of the aspect of this study, is to figure out how do they balance hunting both in shallow water and in deep water, because when they're in deep water, they're going after krill and other things besides sea lion pups and penguins. They also go after the crab eater seals, which are much larger than the sea lion pups. So that would be also very interesting. We assume they are faster than the crab eater seals, and they attack them and lunge for them, kind of like a leopard. <laughs> and we've actually seen the poop um, of a lot of leopard seals, and you can actually see hair in the poop, and you can also tell when they have um, have eaten krill because it's these it's bright red and bright pink poop. And then Renato has actually gone diving, and leopard seals have come up, and he got to see one. Yeah, uh, we've been able to dive around here, uh, not around this island, but around another island with leopard seals. They are very curious, but they can also bring you the food and show to you the penguins when they are eating. And I've been lucky to be here a couple more times before, and it's also really cool to see when they grab the puppies. For It, it could be 30 minutes, and they would grab five different puppies and just take them uh, um, into the ocean and, and then in the surface they will start like uh, hitting them against the, uh, the surface to uh, grab the meat 
And when he says puppies, what he means is Antarctic fur seal pups, which are really small, like the picture we showed earlier. And so they do a type of feeding called grip and tear feeding, which is essentially shaking the prey to pull up smaller pieces of the prey because they're too big to eat in one bite. That's such a great question from both of you. Thanks. All right, perfect. Let's go to another live classroom. Let's go to, um, here we go. Mrs. McCutcheon's grade fives are hanging out in Pleasanton, California. Let me get their microphone turned on. There it is. How are we doing grade fives? Yay! Hi. Um, hi. Uh, my question is, in Antarctica, which animal is your favorite species? Oh, okay. Are you talking? I'm going to go. I didn't hear the very first part of that question, but I'm guessing you, you said, what is your favorite species? And I'm guessing you're talking about here. And I need time to think because that's a really hard question. So I'm going to make Shane go first. I actually don't have a favorite species. I really love working with the male. Oh, Steve. I know this is a really hard question. <laughs> I'll, I'll say Weddell seal. I, I like Weddell seals. They're pretty, they're, I hate to say the word cute, but they're pretty cute. They're so cute. All right, Renato. I'm a first seals person. I've been doing my PhD with first seals, so I'll stick with that. Okay. I have to say fur seals as well. I've been studying fur seals at this site for 20 years, and uh, they're pretty amazing species. And uh, they're uh, uh, not only interesting, but fun to work with. Okay, so we are part of a leopard seal team, and I felt like somebody should have said leopard seal, so I'm going to, because they're awesome. They're huge animals, top predators, eat crazy things, and I love feeding. That just fascinates me. They're talking about an animal that can do this grip and tear feeding. They're huge. And then they're also doing filter feeding. They're crazy. Leopard seals are my favorite. That's such a fun question. Thanks. All right. Excellent. Jump into another live classroom. We are going to Mrs. Matson's group hanging out with us uh, in Green River, Wyoming. Some high school students. Let's get that microphone turned on. How are we doing, Green River? Good. Um, our class just actually ended, but I have a lot of questions. Um, one was um, how, what got you into marine biology and what you are studying now? So what was your drive? Okay, so what got you guys into marine biology? That's a really good question. So, yeah, so that's a good question. So Steve mentioned earlier that he's wanted to be a scientist in fourth grade. I was a little bit kind of, and fifth uh, program had a very young magnet called Voyage of the Mimi, and it was about scientists studying humpback whales. And it was, I watched it in school, and I fell in love. I didn't know that you could work by the ocean, and I decided that's exactly what I wanted to do. I thought I'd be playing with dolphins and picking up seashells, um, not working with. The same thing. Uh, since I was a little kid, I've always been interested in. Uh, marine animals and uh, plants and animals in general. Renato? Um, yeah, I wanted to be a marine biologist since I was in sixth grade and because I really love sharks. And then I started reading about sharks and then everything went through to start watching other species. Nice. Steve? So I grew up in Michigan, uh, not a lot of uh, ocean around there. I, watched The Undersea World of Jacques Cousteau when I was a little bitty kid. I thought it was amazing, and uh, I was hooked. Actually, almost the same exact story, except I grew up in New York City, and I watched The Undersea World of Jacques Cousteau, and that's why I'm here today doing what I do. <laughs> Great question. Thank you so much. Oh. All right, and I'm going to take a final question. There's an elephant seal calling in the background, so I'm going to... I don't know if you guys could hear it, but he was he, um, he was calling, which is pretty neat to hear. Yeah, we definitely heard it. Um, I'm going to take one more question from the YouTube community. And this one is from our Yay! group of so students good. in Massachusetts. And they're wondering, by the end of this expedition, what are you hoping uh, to have learned? Ooh, that's a really good question. And all of us... Um, 
here have expertise in different things. And so I think we're all hoping uh, for different, learning different pieces of the puzzle. So for me, I'm really interested in understanding how individuals are preying on these really different prey types. So things like fur seals and penguins, but also krill and fish, and whether individuals are doing both or whether they're switching behavior. Um, and so, or individuals are specializing on different things. So that's one of the things that really fascinates me, but I'm gonna let everybody else answer too. Mike? Uh, well, one of the primary things we're hoping to learn is just how far they go, where they go during the winter, and uh, when they come back, uh, uh, the timing on all that. And uh, like Sarah, uh, prey switching and what they're feeding on at different times of their life cycle. So I actually study exercise. So what I'm looking at is how the animals actually can perform and do what they do. So how do they actually hunt? How do they swim? How far can they actually go? And what's really important about this project, as Sarah said, is that all of us have different expertise and by putting it all together we're going to start to really understand how leopard seals function in this environment. So for us we're trying to get baseline physiology information on the leopard seals. We don't really know that much about them so my goal is to understand how they use fuels, fats, and what the baseline um, amount of that is. <laughs> Um, I'm uh, interested also in behavior, so I'm really, really uh, expecting what what we're gonna see on the behavior of these animals when we are when they are um, grab, um, getting the prey, but also the behavior that they can get and how they are dispersing through not just through Chile. Yeah, we're seeing some of these animals too. So more elephant seals are making noise in the background. Very yeah, cool. Again, quite the show of species. We have penguins, we have elephant seals, we have more penguins, we have um, whatever the white bird is called, sheath belts as well. I always forget the name. <laughs> Lots of species. All right. It's the, oh, it's the only non web footed bird. Yeah, only well, Sarah and team, thank you so much for another awesome hangout. We're two for two for events from Antarctica. That's pretty darn good. Yeah, I know. I can't believe it works so well. It's amazing. Hi, Molly. Hi, Cooper. <laughs> All right. Hi, <laughs> John. Hey, I'm going to So I want to give a Thanks huge everyone. shout out. Thank you so much. This has been such a blast. Absolutely. A huge shout out to all of our live classrooms, both on YouTube and uh, with us on camera today. Thank you for the amazing questions. And Sarah and team, thank you so much for two amazing hangouts. Thanks for giving us a peek into what it's like being in the field. And we can't wait to hear about how things wrap up. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for all the great questions. It's been wonderful. Keep dreaming and remember you can do whatever you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. All right, things are gonna get loud. I'm gonna turn on all the microphones, boys and girls, nice and loud. I want those penguins and elephant seals to hear you guys saying goodbye and thank you. Nice and loud. All right, thanks again, everyone. That was tons of fun. Uh, we will see you next time. Thanks so much for hanging out today.